My action's running. <laughs> yes. And the suspense is building up. Hi everybody, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. Today I'm going to tell you the story of the Red Hill site in central Pennsylvania. This site is a place that I've been going to since the early 2000s, very dear to my heart. Uh, but it's also the site where one of the most important paleontological discoveries of our time has occurred. That and the other fossil discoveries that it led to on the early tetrapods, the first four-legged creatures to come onto Earth. Now these discoveries had been made by uh, Dr. Ted Deschler and by a local named uh, Doug Rowe, who had found some of the early tetrapods, some of these early four-legged creatures uh, on the hill itself. Now since then, uh, Dr. Deschler has gone on to make some really important discoveries, including one that you'll probably see in your textbooks if you take a biology from about 2008 onwards. You can see the tectolic, one of the early tetrapods that were discovered by Dr. Neil Shubin and Dr. Ted Deschler and others up in the Canadian Arctic. But this all stems from research that they started back in the late 90s at Red Hill. Uh, where some of these tetrapods and early fish are found. Now, Dr. Deschler and Doug Rowe have supported this site. They've allowed people to come and collect. I've been able to bring my fossil collecting club there all these many years, and we've seen some of the great discoveries there. A lot of these discoveries are in the Red Hill Field Station in the town of North Bend that had been put together by uh, Doug Rowe. In fact, he's actually helped restore the building, making it possible for this museum to be there. And every time we've gone there, he's given us some wonderful tours of this museum. We'll see more of that this museum in this video as it progresses. But enjoy the Red Hill site. Uh, enjoy the uh, plants and animals that it, that are uncovered there. The story of the paleontology behind Red Hill starts with Ed Deschler working on his doctorate in paleontology. He, under the direction of Dr. Neil Shubin, was looking for some of the stem tetrapods, some of the earliest four-legged creatures to come onto the land. And while uh, Ted Deschler was out there, he met with a Doug Rowe, a local who had found a very interesting jaw. This jaw, while Ted was out there, he made the discovery of a lifetime, or one of his discoveries of a, life, of a lifetime, when he found a scapula, an important part of a tetrapod. You can see a lot more about how the story unfolded in a film that Dr. Shubin and Dr. Deschler put together called Your Inner Fish. that tells the whole story of the tetrapods at Red Hill and the later tetrapod finds that they found. While working at the site, Dr. Deschler met up with a local named Doug Rowe. Doug Rowe was out looking for, I believe he said, Native American arrowheads when he happened to find a strange looking jaw on the side of the road near the Red Hill site. Well, as luck would have it, they met up and Doug was able to show Dr. Deschler this important find. This was going to actually be the second of two tetrapods found at the site, and this one would be named after Doug Rowe, uh, Designatus Rowe, because of, uh, because of his find of this brand new creature to science. Dr. Deschler's scapula turned out to be a new creature also that he named Hynerpaton. Hyner is the name of a nearby town and state park from the tetrapod site. And so Doug named it Hynerpaton, or thing that crawls near Hyner. So their two discoveries taught us a lot about the earliest creatures. Oh, one more thing I should point out about the Red Hill site. 
This is a site where collecting is allowed by express permission only from Doug Rowe, who is the curator of the site for the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences. It is an active research site. There are still new species, new things to science that are being discovered. We wouldn't want any of those to get lost into a collection in somebody's garage and, and never be known. So our agreement is that when we are invited and allowed to collect at Red Hill, that Mr. Rowe or any of their other designated people are allowed to inspect our finds and the museum gets anything that they want. Now, in the many years that I've been going there, I've only found two items that they wanted out of the hundreds of uh, fossils that I found. And of course, I'm very happy to turn it over to uh, allow it to be a contribution to science. So with Red Hill, by permission only, and they get to decide what you are allowed to keep because some of these finds may be new species or otherwise important to science. We're going to be heading into the Pennsylvania wild. The parts of Pennsylvania that are in the Allegheny Plateau that are largely undeveloped. Along the way, we're going to be stopping at a couple of sites, a couple of places where we're hoping to find some more similar fossils along the way. Well, as we're working at this particular outcrop, we got more than we expected. We'll be spending the night in the town of Renovo, Pennsylvania. The people of Renovo made a huge contribution during World War II. And in fact, one of the bridges that we needed to cross the Susquehanna River to get here is called the Gold Star Mother's Bridge because of the you know, unfortunate loss of um, many of the sons who had fought in World War II. Now, Renovo had been a train hub since the, oh, I guess late 1800s, but unfortunately the train hub and its station had pulled out of the town in the early 1970s, and the town unfortunately had been in decline ever since then. The town of Renovo has made a major comeback, though, in recent years. A revitalization effort has led to things such as the Flaming Foliage Festival, where they celebrate all the beautiful colors of their deciduous trees around October when they start to change. The large groups of fossil collectors who come and visit and stay there as well has also been a boost to their local economy. Here we are at the Red Hill site. And at the site, you can have your meat or veggies. And what I mean by that is you'll notice that most of these rocks have this bright red color, although there are some bands with, and even sections of the greener rock. The red rock is where you're going to find most of your animals. There are fish. There are of many types. The rare tetrapods that everybody's looking for. There's insects like millipedes and even Eurypterid like arthropods have been found in these rocks. One of the most common things you'll find in the red material are teeth. If you look into the greener sections, these are areas that were probably more swamp like. You find well preserved plants. So you can have your meat or veggies in the Red Hill rocks. I should remind everybody that this is an active research site. And what this means 
is that any important finds that we find, things that are unknown to science or things still being studied by the paleontologists working here, actually do have to go to the Academy of Natural Sciences to be studied. That's actually a very good thing to make a contribution to science. Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences is an institution that studies this and, and many other fossil finds. It also has a museum. And it's really worth seeing. A lot of nice uh, displays for people and a lot of great research going on behind the scenes. Hopefully it'll have some fossils. This is all motion, right? What's that? This is all motion? It should be all motion, yes. Okay. This is proof that he's doing some work out here. <laughs> yes. On the last couple of videos, I was always taping somebody else, so the first time in class is this. Right now we're at Red Hill and near North Bend, Pennsylvania. We're looking at an outcrop that's about 367 million years old. Green stuff is uh, deprived of oxygen. You have not very oxidized. You have a lot of uh, green material. The red is stuff that's going to expose the oxygen. Where we're more likely to find animals. Red in the green, blue oxygen green, uh, red in the uh, this uh, section. I've been working on trying to go to find this gun and pull out the boulder because I saw some fossils in the edge. I think it's about ready to go. So if this goes, I'll take one. If I'm lucky, I'll take the fish. Ah. It's just oh, broke no. apart. <laughs> Didn't get the boulder off in one piece. It's not kind of broke apart, so kind of went a little by a little through that. Found some fish scales and things like that. I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, Huh. And now, moment of truth, I think we're going to be able to flip this out. The bowl is in two pieces. One piece is coming off now. And out it goes. Whoa! Whoa. Uh -huh. This is why we have hard hats. Well, here's what came out of that boulder. These are scales. This is a partially articulated Megalithiid. Megalithiid is one of those fish. You find a whole lot of pieces of it together, well, that's really a good thing. This particular fossil, the museum decided to keep one half, but let me have the other half. So one half is actually going to be going to the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences for study, and the other half, the matching half, is something that I'm going to be able to take home and display. After a few hours on the hill, we stopped and took a break so that Mr. Rowe could show us the museum. The museum that he had largely put together and curates a lot of the finds from Red Hill. Most important, do go to the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences, but a lot of it is actually on site at this museum. I don't think it's the real guy. These are the, uh, the The Red Hill Field Station at North Bend, Pennsylvania is a wonderful place to learn about the fossils here and it's very friendly for children. Here my kids were allowed to go ahead and set up microscopes and take a look at the items that were found at the hill that had been brought in. They also have a little sample box for children who uh, or other people who didn't find anything special at the hill. 
uh, on display are some of the really fantastic things that they found. You can see a fin from a large hyneria, a fish probably the size of a small school bus that was chasing the tetrapods. Probably could be one of the reasons why they came out of the sea in the first place. Fossils of the Hyneria also include this very large jaw and teeth, so it was definitely a scary predator. A very good reason for our early ancestors to come up onto the land. There's quite a variety of fossil fish in this, in this museum. Behind this enormous Hyneria fin, you can see a painting that was given to the museum by National Geographic. This is the artwork that appeared in one of their articles and they gave it to the museum afterwards. So we have the Hyneria tail, and it's also part of Hyneria jaw. This huge jaw, part of this uh, predatory fish that lived at the same time as the Hyderpathon and the designats of Rowie, the tetrapods that we know of that were living at the site. There are many other varieties of fish within this museum, Things like sharks and sarcoptian fish, things that led to the tetrapod line, as well as insects and plants. And some of the plants that they have on display are equally amazing. There are branches and parts of Archaeoteris, the earliest known full size tree that evolved during the Devonian. This and many other varieties of plants are represented in the low oxygen sediments that preserve these plants very well over at the Red Hill site. Huh, the CCC. My grandfather served in the CCC. Oh, I'd like to take a moment to tell you why this place is so special to me in particular. Well, back when I was working on my master's in teaching, I wrote my master's thesis here on the environment of Red Hill, at least on the layers that I was working at the time. I started off by making a stratigraphic column, a column that explains all the what I found in the different layers from top to bottom, as far as I could go on that hill, and picked out a layer that I thought was particularly interesting and tried to describe the environment based on the fossil evidence. Well, I wrote my master thesis with my ideas of what I thought was going on there, I volunteered quite a bit over a couple of summers, um, put together, helped prepare a lot of the fossils for the museum, and a couple of that went on to the Academy of Natural Sciences. And on one occasion, I was actually allowed to keep a fossil that I found, which I didn't think I was, back in, I think it was 2006. Doug Rowe uh, had let me keep a nice placoderm, and uh, here it is. So. I volunteered uh, at the field station, prepped some fossils, brought my group out, and even wrote a field guide for the people who are members of my fossil hunting club. So it's really been a, a really nice experience for me, and I, I'm so appreciate, appreciative of the people at Red Hill who made this whole possible. After a day of fossil collecting, we decided to relax and go up to the top of Pinder View to take a look at the large expanse of the Allegheny Plateau. This is awesome. They have a monument up at Pinder View to the CCC. Earlier I mentioned my grandfather had served in that. And what that was, was during the Great Depression, it was a work program for the many, many out of work people who had lost their jobs. My grandfather had been a stockbroker in New York uh, in the late 1920s, and he and uh, my grandmother were also uh, flight early flight enthusiasts. They used to go up with the barnstormers, and in fact, my grandfather had seen Charles Lindbergh off on May 20th, 1927 for his famous flight. He was one of about 100 or so people who uh, saw him off. But after the crash of 1929, my grandfather lost his business and was in uh, very poor financial shape. So he joined the CCC and that helped him uh, earn money and uh, get through the Great Depression. 
what this monument is showing is for the people from the CCC, uh, what the civilian uh, work program did was build a lot of the walls and roads and uh, beautiful views that we see in all these state parks, the state and national parks. This was all done by the CCC. This monument is really uh, to all those workers who uh, left their homes, spent long hours working in uh, remote places to build the beautiful parks that we can enjoy now. Really beautiful area. By the time we got to the top, the sun was setting and we got to enjoy this really beautiful sunset. It was a really nice day. We made a lot of nice finds. Tomorrow we're going to go back and see we out see what else we can find at this site but for now we're just enjoying the really beautiful view and the sunset over the Allegheny Plateau and the Red Hills site. Can you see what this is sticking out of the side of the hill? This looks like a fish skull. It's a bit deteriorated I'm not sure how much is actually there. The fact that it's sticking out of a hill means there's probably a lot more that's already eroded away. But it is worth trying to very carefully work out and to repair. The next find I was about to make was also something where we could see it just sort of edge on sticking out of the rock. It looks very similar to that skull, but not quite as big. I called Doug over to take a look. And we both agreed that it looked like a scapula. It looked like part of the shoulder blade of a prehistoric fish. A decent find, but museum already had a bunch, so they will let me take that home. So I was really happy with that. Well, when I got it home, I noticed that the rock, which uh, had been surrounding the scapula, split and fell apart right where the bone was. And when I looked inside, surprise, it wasn't a scapula. It was a large section of jaw of an enormous fish. Probably half the jaw of a fish that um, was, was enormous. The half of the jaw that I had was about two feet long. So this was a great find, probably an important find. So after preparing it a little bit, I decided to go back to Red Hill. There was actually a weekend coming up where Ted Deschler was going to be there and show Dr. Deschler and Doug this find that I found. Well, quite to my surprise, they actually had a lot from this uh, fish and so I was allowed to keep this one. So this is probably the best uh, fossil that I do have from Red Hill. And it's not completely prepared yet. I'm going to be taking my time. It has a lot of small pieces that have to be glued just into the right place, if assuming I can get it all back together correctly. Um, and also, it looks like the teeth are still going to be embedded inside the stone that has not yet um, surfaced. So I'm going to have to very carefully work this away, maybe find the teeth, and I'll probably have a really great um, fish fossil. Thank you so much to the people at Red Hill. I'd like to start off by showing you some of the plant fossils that I found at Red Hill. This is not from this most recent trip, but these are some of the better things from the many trips that I've been on. This one over here, you can see a couple of different branches or or maybe even stems from that Park Hill Terrace, that earliest known full-size tree. Another branch on this over here. And we also have some blade-like leaf-type structures. I'm really not sure what plant this is. But these are all found in that veggie section, the uh, bluish section inside Red Hill. This here is a little model that uh, somebody was actually selling of Archaeoterrace, this earliest known full-size tree. And this tree is found at Red Hill. Not only do we have samples of this earliest known tree, but there is also some of the earliest known charred wood, indicating the earliest known forest fires in this earliest known forest of trees. So this, I believe, was from season 2005, maybe 2004. 
This is a spine from a gyrocanthus. Gyrocanthus is another one of the uh, spiny fish that you find over at Red Hill. And what I found this time was a really nice pectoral spine, one of these large spines on the outer side. Part of the scapula, part of the bone that holds it on. And I think because they were so close together, this would be part of the pectoral spine from the opposite side. So because they were found very close together in the same rock, I'm interpreting them as probably part of the same fish, but a really nice um, spine from this Devonian fish. Over here, we're looking at some fish scales. Scales to believe from that very large predatory fish, the Hyneria lindae. Now the Hyneria was, like we said, probably the size of a, of a minibus or larger. And one of the reasons we can tell this is because of the size of the scales. I mean, think of the size of scales you see on a modern, ordinary fish, and look how big these things are. One of the reasons that we can tell that these are fish scales are by the attachments. They have these little attachment grooves at the innermost part of the scales. So what we're looking at here is the Placoderm gronapolis. This Placoderm is from Red Hill. It's something that I was allowed to keep after volunteering during the, I believe it was the 2007 season. And you can see these are pretty much the articulated bony plates of this fish, a very strange fish. Whole water is gone. They had their plates or bones on their outside of their head. They're very unusual. Whole water is extinct now. But what's really interesting is as I was working on this, I actually saw some bone from possibly another one up here. And as I cleaned it further, went down just a little bit deeper and found another one, another one of these placoderms in the same rock. So we actually have three of these together. Really, really nice find. And it actually looks somewhat like the illustration from the museum where they happen to have three of them together. Of course, one of the things that people come to Red Hill for is to find the fossil teeth. These are teeth from some various fish. They could be Hyneria. This one's probably a Hyneria that, from the giant fish. It's just the crown of the uh, very top of the tooth. has a serrated edge. Um, some of these could be other fish. And some of these could even possibly be these ancient tetrapods because they weren't very far derived from their fish ancestors at this point. And we don't really have enough of them uh, to really know exactly what their teeth were like. Most of these early tetrapods that they're finding at Red Hill are inarticulated, are fragments that they're trying to put together and learn from. Right now we are looking at that really nice find, the one that I actually brought back to show uh, Dr. Deschler, the fish jaw, the fish jaw that uh, it's in, the, it's a little bit beat up. I have all the pieces and I'm gonna be reconstructing this. At this point though, it's starting to crack a bit, so I'm gonna actually order some consolidant, something to help it to soak into the bone and help it stay together because it's uh, in a very fragile state. Here's the other side of it over here. It's in a very fragile state and what I'm going to want to do is take my time and, and do it right because this is a, a really nice fossil of a, of a very rare fish from a very special place. I think I might even see a tooth, the part of a tooth next to this here. One other thing I'd like to share, and it's kind of a strange coincidence, but I had mentioned that National Geographic had done an article on the early tetrapods and uh, had given that picture to Red Hill. Well, it turns out when they did that article, they have a picture of Dr. Deshla holding up the thin st structure of one of the early tetrapods. 
And on the opposite page, it just turned out that another friend of mine, who is a paleontologist, uh, Dr. Lyle Anderson for the National Museum of Scotland, was on the opposite page. The two friends happened to end up on opposite pages of the same National Geographic article. So I had asked uh, both of them to sign it, and they did that for me. So it's quite a, uh, a unique little um, article that I'll cherish. Thank you to both of you. Well, thank you very much for joining me on the adventures into the Pennsylvania wilds and the Red Hill Tetrapod Fossil Site. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Or if you leave a comment, I will be very happy to answer. And better yet, if you like what you saw, just I think down near the corner there, there's a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button and I'll make more of these for you.